What's up y'all, it's Darrell here. In today's video, I'll be showing y'all how to use Celeround. So let's get into it. All right y'all, so the first thing you wanna do is go to your Celeram settings. Now once you get to your settings, you're gonna to go to buying criteria. Then you will see the minimum BSR and the maximum BSR. The BSR stands for best sellers rank. And all this means is, is how popular your product is in the Amazon catalog. So for my maximum BSR, I always like to have it set to 100,000. For my minimum profit, it's always $3. And for my minimum return on my investment, it's 30%. So if you scroll down to the additional costs, these are just uh, like other fees. If you're doing FBA, then your, your inbound shipment plays a big role in this. So I typically set, have mine set to 25 cents per pound. And then I have my inbound placement as partial shipment splits because it's cheaper if you um if you if you split your shipments up. So if you scroll down some more, I typically typically don't mess with none of this. Quick info, I have all of these set to yes. Yeah, so show profit, show profit margins, show your return on your investment, show break even price, and show the offer summary. Once you scroll down some more, your uh, SAS panels, you want to have these toggled on your ranks and prices, quick info, alerts, profit calculator, offers, charts, variations, buy box analysis, Keepa, and Seller Central. Okay, so just say that you are in the store right now and you just scanned this pair of Adidas shoes. So the first thing, first thing you're looking for is are you eligible? Yes or no? If you are not, then you need to get ungated in the in Adidas brand. Second thing, the BSR. My maximum BSR is always 100K, so this product is at 56K, which is great. Estimated sales. I always look for products that are 100 and up. This, this product has 535 sales a month, but it has variations, which we will get to in a second. Next thing, your max cost. Your max cost is basically the max you, you should be paying it in order to meet your profit and your return on your investment. The cost price. This is the, the store price. So if the, if the shoe is priced at $38 in the store, you put $38 in the cost price. And the sales price is basically how much you are selling this product for. Next. So with all that being said, you, I will, you will be making $16.60 in profit. Your profit percentage will be 22%. ROI 43.68% and your break even price is at $53.48. So your even price is basically your cost and income price. It's it's equal. So you didn't lose or you didn't gain, you know. So the next thing you want to do is scroll down to your alerts and this basically is just your your checklist. So are you eligible? Yes. Is this product a hazmat? No. Dangerous goods program? No. Amazon share buy box. So that when it says the Amazon share buy box, it's basically saying if Amazon has been on this listing in the last 90 days. So this is great. Amazon has not been on this listing. Private label. Private label is basically that someone makes their own brand and is selling it on Amazon. So in this case, no. IP analysis. No known IP issues. And that basically means uh, in the past, has Adidas issued out IP complaints to sellers for selling their products? So no size standard size and is this a notable no variations this listing has 43 variations so let's go back up to scroll back up so right here 535 sales a month but all those sales does not go to this product right here it goes to other sizes and colors so as you can see this little exclamation mark it will tell you we estimate this product sells 535 units per month across all variations so what you do is you scroll down to your variations better and you just click check. And this basically shows you which product sells the most out of that 535 times a month. So this product only sells at 2% of the time out of 535 times. So this is not a very great seller. So you want to stay away from this product. Typically, you want to do, I would say, the top three. 
you will want you will want to look for the best top three uh variations. So nine and a half, eleven and a half, and eleven. You know, fourteen percent, eleven percent, eleven percent. So always go for the top three, in my opinion. So next thing we go to our profit calculator. So cost price thirty eight dollars, sales price seventy three dollars. Our fulfillment type is going to be FBA, or you can switch between FBM. So if you keep switching back and forth, the prices are going to change because it's all it's all different fulfillment types. So FBM, FBA. When you're doing FBM, you have to do all the shipping and fulfillment yourself. If you're doing FBA, everything is already calculated for you. Your offers. So this basically tells you how many how many sellers is on this listing right now. So we have a total of 16 sellers right now. We got seven of them doing FBA and nine of them doing FBM. And this basically tells you how much inventory they have, the price they're selling at, and their profit and ROI. Easy. So move on down to the chart section, which is very important because this basically is just the price history of your product in the last day, week, month, three months, or past year. So you would know if Amazon is on this listing because it just would be a straight orange box scattered across the screen of this chart screen. Um, next is the FBM, just a straight blue line. FBA, an orange line. The buy box, the pink line, which is the most important line of the graph. And then you have your sales rank, which is your BSR. So always follow the pink line. Always follow the pink line. So Bob, you get to keep it. You can literally toggle off third party FBA and third party FBM. The only thing you really need to see is take that off too. The only thing you need to see is Amazon, the buy box, and the sales rank. So when we're looking at the buy box, this is this is how uh, a trick I just used in the past and that's helped me now. If I can just take my finger and just go across this graph, the, the, the pink line, straight across, then that's how I determine if a product is good or not. So for the most part, uh, this is a pretty steady graph. Um, a few dips here and there, which is going to happen. We had a, a suppressed buy box right here, but then we gained buy box again. And for the most part, uh, it's, it's pretty steady in range. I feel like I say it's always it's, there's always going to be a few dips here and there, as long as it doesn't get to the point where you have to take your finger and you have to go like this on a graph, you know, like like a roller coaster. Then that means just too many too many price adjustments, too many price decreases, too many price increases. That those are the kind of products you definitely want to stay away from. So keep that in mind. Uh, if you go down to the the rating. And this basically just shows you like the, the ratings of this product. Uh, so if, if the ratings is going up, then that's, that's a good sign. That's a good thing. The review count is going up. Good thing. Now, now your offer count, which is the, the purple line. If you see that the offer count is going up, that means that more sellers are buying this product. So at that point, you don't want to compete with the whole world. So I typically stay away from uh, products that has a high offer count, like 35 sellers, 40 sellers, 50 sellers, because at that point, I'm just in competition with the whole world. I don't want to be in competition with the whole world. You know what I'm saying? So, but if the offer count starts to drop, that means a good thing. That means that this product is selling out and you need to go grab more of it ASAP. It's in, it's in demand. Now, another thing, if if the offer count decides to just drop instantly to like, if it's, let's say if it's at like uh, right now, 16, just say if it drops down to one in the next day, and that means that it can be a sign of uh, IP complaint. So that means that the brand issued out an IP, uh, a IP complaint to all these sellers telling them to remove their product and that's why the offer count dropped. So keep that in mind also. So we're gonna go back to um, seller amp and basically this middle chart right here is just basically telling you the monthly sold. So as you can see, there's no number at the monthly so which is this is the most least pop this is the least popular variation of this of this product so you wouldn't want to buy this as you can see there's no number right here <laughs> variations we went over that already buy box analysis so buy box analysis is basically saying uh which seller wins the buy box the most um the buy box is basically just the add to cart feature the buy now feature you just you want to get this every chance you get. So right here, as you can see, this seller has the buy box. Pro Deal Central. Buy now. Add to cart. You want this every chance you get. So if you scroll up, 
you want a seller to be under you want a seller to be under 50% when winning the buy box. So this is this is this is the whole point of the buy box analysis. So you just literally just click on these numbers. Okay. That's not clicking up. That's weird. Okay, so this seller wins the buy box 16% of the time. So that's great. Remember what I said, always you want to sell it to be under 50%. So he's at 16%. So if this was a great selling product, you could definitely hop on his listing uh, and, and win that buy box. So this is very important. Buy box analysis, very, very important. You don't want to hop on a listing. So if a seller said, if it says a seller, a seller wins the buy box, 60% of the time, 70% of the time, 80% of the time, 90% of the time, stay away from it. Do not do not get on that listing because if you don't if you don't have the inventory and the customer feedback and you know the good pricing, you will not win the buy box. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> and yeah, that's pretty much it for seller amp settings. Um if y'all enjoyed this seller amp video, like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll be glad to drop some more Amazon tips for y'all in the upcoming week. I'm out.